All righty, Shonda, turning it over to you, and I will stop sharing my screen. Thank you, Mark. So let me share my screen. Can you see my robot? Yes. Great. Okay. Thank you so much, Mark, for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk about this topic. So how this topic has come into the existence, I think two, three months back, I tried to compile a, a LinkedIn uh, story. And uh, I think um, Jimmy is supposed to observe that. And, and she, she requested like, is, can that be a discussion topic? I said, yeah, that's a discussion topic. Why not? So that's how this, this theme has come into the existence. So let me quick uh, start this uh, conversation. So uh, just to visualize this uh, analogy, which has built is actually from swimming. So, so swimming, I, I know most of you love swimming. So from there, I try to build that analogy, like from swimming, uh, how can I take it to the next uh, uh, of our work, like uh, in our digital transformation. So quickly, uh, just to touch upon like uh, my initial decade of my career, I was involved uh, many large uh, pro program execution or product development. So I started with um, building this product. What you're seeing here, it is actually called patient monitoring system. So most of the hospitals nowadays, uh, you will have this device, which actually measure the vital parameter of uh, every patient, whoever uh, admits there. Though it looks very simple, but it's very complex systems. Uh, so I spent four years to build this system in, in C++ and embedded software. So that gave me an immense opportunity to really know what's inside this, how this machine can help human life, because it's one of the mission critical systems. So but but I am fortunate that I was actually part of this large teams and and great C plus plus developer who ca who has actually taught me about building systems. So that 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 is one great opportunity I had, and after that I joined Honeywell Aerospace System. Um, so whatever you are seeing here, it is an Airbus A380 cockpit system. So I was involved in this device which is visible here. It's called AGPWS, Enhanced Ground Proximity Warning System. It helps the pilot to maneuver the aircraft uh, from a different terrain, from different obstacles. So if you try to take your aircraft towards a building, it will give, it will make a lot of noise. Terrain, terrain, pull up, pull up. So it's a mandatory device uh, planted into this system. And uh, and it's it's not an easy system. This is also one of the mission critical system, which actually interact with thousands of sensors to really tell that warning call, terrain, terrain, pull up, pull up. So, so by working, I, I worked with Airbus A380 and then also Dreamline 787. So that also gave me an immense opportunity to work with the large system. And 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 those those programmers actually made me what I am today. And I am I am thankful to those programs, the people, and the opportunity I got. Uh, after that, I joined uh, ABB, I see a brown brewery. Uh, and this is one of the industrial automation product. It's a call power system product and most of the power grid today, uh, everywhere you go, this has an automated control system. So whatever you are seeing here, from this control room, we can actually completely navigate the whole power flow into a city or a state or a town. So from one single point, like if you can hack this system, you can really power off or power on or, or do whatever you would like to see. So that's the power of this system. So it's a, it's a very also complex system like uh, all the information it gets from the field, uh, all the bus, uh, all the switch gear, whatever is uh, lying in the system, uh, they can easily power off. Like if there is any tornado coming, they can from this control room turn off the system and again turn back to the system. So that's also another large system which I've worked on. And one of our customer was uh, uh, New York Power Grid. So whatever picture you are seeing here is from that New York Power Grid. So. What I am trying to say is actually all this program has gave me an opportunity to understand the large system and that is helping me to stay relevant in today's world. And I try to capture all the learnings as and when I just move on, I try to capture all these things and in the blogs or in the in the different means so that I don't forget those information. So that's how this this um, this compilation has born. So you can say this is also another my additional project. Every year I do one of the projects which helps me to formulate my thoughts or, or, or actually helps me to also do my job better so that's what about me so let me go into the swimming pool so how do you feel like when you look at this picture <clears throat> this is something to do about feeling so whenever you are first learning about the swimming um, 
Uh, initially, it may be challenging, right? Initially, first few days, but uh, over a period of time, you will build this mastery like, okay, you can swim in the swimming pool in your backyard or in your apartment complex or your community center. And uh, over a period of time, it become monotonous, like after maybe 45 minutes or maybe one hour of the swimming practice, maybe you have crossed it maybe 10 times, 20 times. Over a period of time, you always look for the next level of challenges, next level of scale, like what is that? So if you talk to swimmers, like their dream is to actually go to the English channel. So it's like a Mecca for the swimmer. Like um, if you are a mountaineer, uh, you would like to climb Himalaya because that's the highest uh, level of mountaineering. So same way, like every swimmer has a dream to go to this English channel and cross it. So what is the difference? Like uh, from a swimming pool, what at near at your house, at your community center versus this English channel swimming pool, what is the difference? So let us try to understand this. Uh, so some of the characteristics of English channels, I would, I would like to highlight that it's in between UK and France. You might, you, you, you know it or, or you, 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 this is what it is. And uh, um, distance is around 34 kilometers. Um, temperature is varying from six degree to 14 and 18 degrees centigrade. Um, weather continuously changing. It's sometimes very windy, sometimes swelling. There is a lot of uh, tides in the, in the, in the channel. You will come across a lot of jellyfish, powerful currents. These are some of the interesting things you will come across if you say you happen to really aspire to go into English Channel. Salty, cold water. And if you are um, trying for this English Channel swimming, um, you, you can have a boat who can help you, but you cannot touch that boat. They can feed you, they can give you food and supply, all these things, but you can't touch the boat. So that's the rule of the game. Um, and that space is one of the busiest shipping space. So a lot of ships will be moving towards that direction. So what does that mean? So these are all some of the things we need to watch out. And uh, other than jellyfish, uh, fortunately, you will be able to come across um, uh, bottlenose and uh, dolphins, seals, blah, blah, blah. So so many things you'll come across. And of course, seasickness like um, it takes how long it takes 27 hours max from 7 hours to 27 hours to cross the english channel because it is 34 kilometer so imagine the scale imagine imagine the 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 level of exercise you need to do to really reach that and you may get hypothermia it is not a child play so so you can imagine the scale just imagine from where you have started you have just started your journey from your swimming pool and we are talking about the English channel. Now we have talked about the characteristics of the English channel. Now you can think about the scale, complexity and the kind of challenges a swimmer will experience when they will get into this English channel. Okay, so how do they prepare? What do they do? By the way, I would like to really tell about this. So far for last, I think uh, 50 years, there are 27 fatality happen in the English channel because of so many reasons. So that's something to be really watch out. Now, how do they prepare? What do they do? It is not the same in your backyard swimming pool. It is not at all the same. The scale, the complexity, the challenges, and, and the, the, the kind of preparation is needed. It's completely diverse, completely different. You need to, what I have, when I really discussed with some of the people, you need to really practice in open water for long time, for long miles, for long hours. And you need to accustom with the cold water because it should not be like a 20 degrees centigrade or 30 degrees centigrade it has to be cold because that is where you are actually going to swim in english channel you need a strong support team member who can help you uh, to to maneuver this swimming pool a good captain and medical team constantly because seven hours to 27 hours that's the span like where most of the people have really gone through and it takes minimum five to six years to really build your stamina that, that's capability, ability, mental strength, whatever you call it, you, you need to really scale yourself up to reach to that level. Mind, people people are talking about the strength of the mind, the dedication, the commitment is something which had to be re continuously built upon it. So, and, and you need to really st stretch in between so that this seven hour to 27 hour, that range of swimming, it did not really uh, stop you. So I, one of my friends, Shikant Vishwanathan, I, I worked with him in Hanuel in 2009 when I was actually leaving Hanuel. That time I just handed over to him my work. Uh, he used to work in a Hanuel building solution. And in 2015, he crossed the English Channel. So I was not knowing at that time he was a swimmer, but he did told later that like it took six years, like long period of practice to reach to that level, several attempt to reach that level. So what are you talking about? So 
if i am a swimmer if i am an entry level swimmer versus if i am a if i am a master swimmer and 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 people ask also how about like if michael felt uh, try to cross the english channel so so will it be successful will it be uh, challenging for him so and then of also i read about like it's a completely different topics the diverse topics it's not the same context because english channel swimming need different types of preparation it's like a sprint versus marathon the sprint practice versus marathon practice is completely different so we need to groom ourselves for that purpose so the moment the context changes our preparation our mental stamina our readiness is completely different so that's how the scale and complexity we are talking about that's uh, that's the challenge you are talking about so with that let us go into the actual actual stuff i am getting my office mail okay so let me move on to my our real world like what what gives us bread and butter so um i'm just putting a timer here so that i can it's on time okay so let me move into that next chapter of our journey <clears throat> most of us in the form of a scrum master agile coach product owner product manager whatever role you are playing either you are building a rocket either you are building a that next generation battery storage which can run a city or you are developing a vaccine more or less you will be seeing the challenges or the scalability of the the challenges is actually multiplies whenever you think about this large thing like building a rocket building a vaccine the scale and complexity you see it's it's the same analogy i am going to keep referring this what we are seeing here like today's uh, most of the most of the engagement is actually digital in nature most of our large program most of our large product development it's actually going to be more and more digitized more and more digital in nature when i started that passion monitoring system the kind of complexity i have it is actually still a desktop standalone system versus now it is a globally diversified system where it is interacting with the many diverse devices right now you imagine the scale it has is grown so most of the program what i am seeing in my experience in another upcoming decade um, i am seeing it will be more and more digitized more and more ai more and more data more and more cloud A lot of aspects is coming to this picture so why i am telling this <clears throat> the probability is that you will be able to get ac come across this kind of complexity because digital means complex and and slowly we'll get into there but in our upcoming days we have to be more and more digital savvy the more and more digital savvy this this complexity will come across so let us think about a situation so um there is a team maria is a product manager so just um, one of my colleague maria is a product manager and she has her wonderful team and um, kelly is the scrum master jim is the agile coach and you have a very fantastic customer to satisfy and she has a wonderful team of avengers who is helping her to build a system so what is that system so she got a assignment to build this system which is actually a healthcare product and you know it is the latest healthcare product which is actually cutting across all the technology what you can think of uh, big data the microservice and the cloud and all the multiple devices so that means the iot is also there so why 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 we are doing this uh, why doing this modernization because the legacy system is not able to satisfy our customer because legacy system is very slow legacy system is very difficult to really manage so we need to go for this kind of solution which is very robust and speed of agility or 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 speed of doing business is much more high with this system so maria has or her team has got this assignment to develop this system so what are we um talking about now what type of challenges maria will get into now maria is going from her backyard swimming pool to the english channel maria is literally thinking about like okay now i need to cross the english channel now i need to really list down what are those cold weather salty water 27 hours of swimming then the the, the busiest traffic all those things are coming under her way to build the system and it is a multi year program and 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 due to the nature of the digital world it's a multi year problem so what are the what are the threats then okay let us jump into this so you see the statistics says that most of the digital program get into turbulence so in english channel you never know when the weather changes if the weather changes your complexity multiplies so same with the any digital program we are getting into it it's not easy it's it's full with lot of challenges and success rate is very less because of the nature of the program and and all the successful companies who have been able to really overcome those challenges they are really minting a lot of money so 
a lot of stats are there. You can always refer this like a, whatever I am saying that the success of digital program is what is the chance of success of the digital program. Now, if I am a Maria, then how should I prepare myself to really overcome some of these challenges? So I just want to highlight some of the challenges like which we come across, like which I have come across in the digital transformation program. They are immense, but I have just highlighted few. And, and these are something to watch out. So just to start with this, like I, I have put it in a, in a, in a, in a non-linear fashion so that uh, linearity can go away. I have not put it in a sequentially. So just to highlight that in the digital world, everything is linear, everything is non-linear, not sequential. Everything comes suddenly, parallelly from all the dimension. So wherever we touch about the digital program, these are the fundamental problems we see, see come across. Organizational structural problem, either structure is not allowing uh, the product we build very fast, People problem, people are not ready to really adapt with the kind of changes we are asking for. The transformation strategy has not been formulated properly. Most of the time, if you come across or if you are currently dealing with any digital transformation program, you will be able to see that these are the, some of the dominant issues organizations are facing. Technology, the technology itself is a major bottleneck. It is sometimes enabler, it itself is a sometimes bottleneck. The process, the entire process, the business process or, 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 the, or the product building process, the entire process itself could be a bottleneck. And the foundation is how well the leadership is enabling, how the culture is enabling. So you will be able to see that these are the major challenges when you go into English channel, especially in our digital transformation context. So <clears throat> think about this scenario. Swimming in a calm sea versus swimming in a turbulent sea. Just you have to feel it. To, when you feel it, you will be able to experience it. Like, okay, what we are talking about? And why should I listen? Why should I bother? Why should I really take care of all these things? Then you will be able to understand like what we are talking about. So whenever you touch a legacy system, at least maybe you will not be able to see this pole, but in India, if you go to town, you will be able to see this pole. Now you are the electrician who's supposed to fix this pole. Think about a situation. You are the electrician who's supposed to fix this pole. How dare you would like to touch this pole? Where you will touch this pole? Our legacy system, which is built on a monolithic structure, suddenly it gone into modernization. Now you think monolithic to modernization, like a touching this system, touching this electric pole. You are Maria. How can you help? You are the Kelly. How can you help? You are the Jim. You, you remember our strong team, what you're talking about? We'll be keep referring this particular thing. So I would like to really touch upon, there are some external factors which is significantly influenced the digital transformation to happen. The external factor, though we do not have a much purview or much control to do that, but it influences us. Russia war, recession coming. How does it matter? If it is happening in the, some corner in the world, why should I bother? But it matters. Anywhere in the world, in the corner, something is happening. It is significantly causing a disturbance into other side of the world because of the supply chains are so interconnected and digital product happen to be so much diverse. They are so much interconnected. Our entire business model is interconnected. We are living in a global system. Global system. So that's how we need to be really cautious when you are build a transformation strategy. Is it taking care about the changing needs of every day basis, every month basis? So how dynamic that, that, that transformation strategy is. Why we are talking? We are helping Maria. We are helping Kelly. Or I mean, I'm a Kelly. So, so if I'm a Kelly, this pastel analysis can help us to understand whatever that healthcare system we are building, how much it is vulnerable from the external system. Are we robust enough to really take care about this thing? So this is one of the aspects I would like to touch upon. Uh, um, the way we are communicating, the way we are aligning all the parties, because all the rocket, what we are building, all the large system we are building, definitely there are multiple teams are involved. Definitely there are multiple leadership people are involved. So how well we are aligning them, how well we are binding them together. So is there any strategy? Is there any things we are thinking about it? So this is also another biggest bottleneck. If you survey it, like in the digital fail, reason for a failure of the digital program, you will be able to see that. Silos organizations, I'm sure you might have come across like these are the these are the like a business unit or a squad or a tribe like where they are building their own kingdom. Sometimes they don't want to talk about the other unit, maybe different barriers, different mental barriers, different different rule in the organization. So this cause a lot of problem to really build a large system. It 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 it, it caused like a like a slowing down the creation of the large system. So this is this is one of the one of the major problems. And then hands off, like whenever 
though they will be talking the inter department or cross department communication but you will be seeing there is a latency there is a, there is a slowing down system because of so many reasons the the systems are not talking with each other the process are not talking with each other the culture the context are completely different some department is in in europe some department is in china so so there is a cultural clash is happening and because of that hands ups are happening but we are a globally distributed team and we are trying to build this large healthcare system where we are geographically dispersed so how do you handle that um the digital is demand a lot of skill resource especially ai data cloud cloud architect and then a lot of experiment because we don't know what we are building so the people are the building blocks people are the fundamental of all this digital transformation so how good our people are how competent our people are that is something um, when you think about this large scale program so so it's, it's as you are seeing this is a multiple attempt like the air the water and land like a army navy the air, air, the air, air, aircraft so so all the direction we are trying to attack to address this situation how well our leaderships are involved are they sitting on the ivory tower and then giving a command sitting in the command center just collecting the information or they are grounded they are sitting with the team trying to understand what problem our team members are facing and let us discover let us figure it out that is also another biggest bottleneck what we have observed like in the large program execution what else i have yes so the complexity because that's that's the another thing i would like to talk talk about is the complexity most of the digital transformation is characteristics are complex in nature and if you if you have read it like complex adaptive system the characteristics is evolving and emerging you cannot predict what is upcoming it will evolve and you need to just get along with this thing you need to just address it on the runtime you need to really dynamically figure it out okay how well i should work it out how well i should uh, fix it if the mindset is not like that if 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 we do not have that okay i want a plan i would like to be plan driven then the chances of failure is very high because the complex systems characteristics is changing nature of this thing so that's why i would like to touch upon like organization complexity is one of the biggest bottleneck there could be a vertical complexity there could be a horizontal complexity there could be a bureaucratic nature the the strategy is missing process is not enabling so we as a as a facilitator or a agile coach or as a whatever role we are playing we try to really look into this with our lens how well all those factors has been taken care vertical horizontal spatial complexity so first whenever i deal with this kind of large system uh, development i need to really analyze all this plot whatever i i just highlighted few uh, of course another aspect is are you buying something or are you building something or are you buying and building and just trying to fix it because it con it significantly differs whenever you are going into this hybrid model your strategy completely differs what works in a buying will not work in building the strategy changes the skill set changes process changes the complete arena changes complete landscape has changes so what i have touched up on here this is what i have experienced whenever i deal with some kind of a large digital transformation program like you will be able to see the footprint of all those aspects something as very very the, the the problem are very deep somewhere it is very at surface level sometime it is visible sometime it is not visible you need to hunt for it but it will be there the footprints will be there so what do i do okay i know this i, I if i read internet also i i'll come to know this but our biggest challenge is i would like to help maria because i am an agile coach i work with her as a product manager i would like to coach maria so that together as a whole team i would like to really address all those factors we need to take a strategic steps to really address all this factor because our solution what we are building it's very complex in nature and complexity as we have described will be constantly changing and how can i help jim or kelly or or maria to come over this kind of situation i am sure i have not told anything new you might have come across all these things in in your context but i just reinforce this particular problem this this problem remains in the system these problems are there we need to find we need to find a course of actions on that and do something about it but these problems you will be able to see that sometime we will be able to really completely address this one but sometime we need to really work it out continuously so it's not a silver bullet it's not a quick solution but we need to find this problem so with this these are all whatever you will be experiencing in english channel 
the person who is going to swim in english channel very much aware what are the difficulties they are going to face he or she knows that i am going to swim for 7 hours to 27 hours he or he mentally prepared that this is the challenge i will come across jellyfish i will come across hypothermia whatever it is i will face a traffic challenge they know that and they work on it because that's the way forward there is no other alternative there is no shortcut so in the digital transformation program also you will come across this problem you know it you you know it if you search also um you will be able to see that now let us go into the next next platform like what can i do about it what do i do now okay i i, I have come across all this thing now what do i do so let me let me zoom it i'm not going to read out this but i would just really touch up on some of the vital things which has really worked with us which is really helping us now also uh, which has actually enabled us to address this complexity at the end of the day whatever i am saying here is not going to help you what is working in a healthcare system will not work in aerospace will not work in a retail will not work in a telecom because whatever i am saying saying here it worked with me but perhaps it may not work with you but you can do some experiment and really address these challenges you can experiment but you cannot sure that okay it will solve your problem now again how can i help maria so so at the end of the day i want to build a system or i want to build a digital solution which can satisfy our thanos thanos is our customer so i am satisfying our thanos and for that we have a team member called avenger team member so i want to touch um, start with this like big picture thinking i am an agile coach okay join into this particular program which is developing a next generation healthcare system which can be accessed from the any device any pharmacy hospital anywhere seamlessly should be able to help the patient to know what's happening so so that's the system we are developing now to build such a system we need to really take care from 60000 feet point of view how well it has been formulated so these are some of the factors like we have been chalked out in our program like okay all this factor has to be in place of course the gradients can be differ like uh, the entry level or the maturity can be vary but at least all those factors needs to be there in the system say about governance okay now for this large healthcare development program how is the governance system are in place how mature the government system is and what can i do to improve the current governance practice is it helping me to move the needle towards the positive direction or take about change management or take about any other thing agile release management how well that the release process has been taken care is this enabling us to satisfy thanos is this helping up to move forward so what are we doing about it there is no prescription but this is is the area to really look upon this is the area to really work upon so as a coach what do you do we actually come out with a coaching backlog and coaching backlog from where i should start if i really assess the entire eco space like whatever the digital uh, healthcare product they are building if i join there tomorrow as a as a as a agile coach or product manager or program manager i will assess like all those factors how well it is in position i will assess them and see their maturity is there anything i can do so formulating a or chalk out a plan is something which can minimize some of the complexity some of the complexity minimize do not eliminate second factor i would like to talk about this product development strategy how well the product development strategy are in place how well it has been formulated by considering all those aspect today's all digital product is all about experience how are you feeling how are you using the system are you satisfied the way you use the system of healthcare system the kind of technology has used is this technology is helping us to create the feature faster or is this technology is helping us to find the issues faster like so so the technological dimension identifying thanos like okay what thanos wants okay, are you sitting with the thanos to understand like what are their real needs are some of this which he or he can he can express he cannot express so those expectation and the process end to end process is this process enabling us or it's really hindering us or is it really slowing us down what are we doing about it so again for formulating a strategy around this and of course the branding without branding today's digital world it is very difficult to penetrate the to the crowd because of the crowded space in the digital ecosystem it's too much crowded too much noise so that is very important pillar and at the bottom of this our people aspects the leadership capability our high performance team and the cultural enablement i know you know everything 
or most of us are actually if you, if you close your mind most of you most of you are wherever you are working and you will be able to footprint of all these things but the question is how well those things has been formulated how mature those things are if i just talk about the culture okay what do you mean by culture now here we are talking about like is this the right culture which is helping us to build this digital product is maria happy is 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 maria is able to reach to the thanos at the time whatever they are targeting for so if you ask this kind of questions, it will give us a, some kind of a retrospective, like, okay, what do I do now? Okay, I have joined in this team. What do I do now by asking this question? First, we will focus on those areas, like, okay, how well these areas are positioned and how mature those are. And what can I do about this? Let me go to some other area. Okay, this is one. Another area I would like to talk, talk about is everything is high performance team. All the team is the end of the day is the actually backbone of any system, any, any company, any organization is the team. And the high performance team, I'm visualizing it as like a tree and it has a foundation, it has a trunk, and then only it will give you the outcome. And, and, and some, of the, some of the factors which actually create a high performance team is ability to understand the context. If I am building a rocket, my context are changing. If I, am a, if I am going to a swimming pool, my context are changing. So the strategy changes based on the context because the customer space changes, the problem statement changes. Are we able to assess that and really act on that? Then team composition, like whenever you build any digital product, you should have a data, you should have a tester, you should have, a, means all those composition, the skills, competency, what I'm talking about, the chemistry, how well we are gelling with. If I have a team member from the Europe, from the US, from the, from the Africa, are we able to get along with together? How well we are gelling? Because that's the dynamics of the team. If, if it is a better dynamics, your chances of success is much more higher. Coaching. Everywhere you will, everybody is a coach. A leader is a coach. The team member is a coach. Everybody has a, some type of coaching. Like if I am a very good at certain things, I'll be able to, through my coaching mechanism, I will be able to spread it faster because in the digital world, every knowledge is continuously changing. How can I cope up with the changing needs? The technology is changing, customer behavior is changing. It's the coaching which is actually helping. And the leadership who is actually enabling everything's to happen. So Maria, what Maria does, Maria sits with the team, Maria try to understand what my team members are doing, what type of challenges my team members are facing, what can I do differently, what can I do? So if we if we take care about all those aspects uh, during our coaching, chances are that we'll be able to really cater some of this complexity dimension. We cannot eliminate, but complexity will be there. The one of the strongest foundation, whatever I have seen, uh, which is really significantly helping us is actually this OIA concept. We are building a system which is actually consisting of multiple teams. Like it's it's hundred plus people who are actually involved in this data lake, building data lake, and creating this front end, and then putting everything in the cloud. So it's a multiple team. So how do I bring all the people in a one page? How do I aligning them together? If I am formulating a, some strategy, there is a possibility that some of the team members may not align with us. How do I do that? How do I consistently able to bring all the product teams into the single page? So Obaya, you might have you might read it like it. It's, it's a Japanese concept where it is talking about the large wall. So that means I should have a wall where everybody can see at runtime what's happening. What is the strategy? Where, what are you developing? How many microservices? Where are the testing? Is this deployed or not? Hundred of the questions you can ask and but it should be really radiate that information. So thank God to the Miro what I'm using right now. Miro has significantly enabled all the party to be on one page virtually from anywhere in the world at any time. So. These tools are actually enabling all the party to really connect, sync, align, collaborate, right? So the more and more as a coach, we are enabling that to happen, confusion eliminating, conflicts minimize, and then chances of that complexity will come down. Yeah, yeah. So Mark is giving some indication. So quickly, quickly, just to move around. So uh, we have been using USD system thinking tool, like just to go bottom of the iceberg, like what is not known? What is missing? We keep on asking this question. Everywhere we go, like if I if I just plot this one, we go to that iceberg bottom, what I don't know. What should I discover? How should I poke? What do I do to, to discover this unknown? So that's another thing I would like to touch upon. Uh, what is this? Uh, another thing I would like to talk? Yes, yes. So the same vision, the whatever that uh, obaya room i showed how can i uh, how can i run the large connection meeting is open space like we have been executing it for for several years like it is really successful for us it's really helping us to really discover the unknowns really bring out the people's mind into the table so so these are some of the thing um really helped us so I, I i do believe that you please study this one and run it several times it will be it is very uncomfortable to run it with 100 people without any agenda but on on a, on a run time once you start running it with with 100 people things will evolve things will emerge people will be comfortable people will talk people will talk about what is 
the bothering thing what is the elephant in the room can you talk about the elephant can you really can you do something about it so this will really significantly enables people to have a this um, that that clash that clash that creative clash and and significantly this particular model, this uh, liberating structure has really helping us, like giving that comfort to the people, allow that safety space for the people to speak out without any fear. So the more we allow that to happen, more we give that comfort, that then only the things will come somewhere from the some corner in the room, some people will comment that, okay, this particular system will not work because I have seen this particular software is not written properly. So that comfort, whenever I give to the people, then things will emerge and the possibilities are there. We'll be able to really solve the complex problem much more faster. So I just touched upon some of the critical point as Mark is continuously indicating. So coaching is the another part. Like I strongly believe the whole organizations need to be in the coaching hat, coaching mindset. Leaders, coaches should be constantly coaching the people to uplift them from wherever they are. So that is something very vital for us. And, and we as a coach are religiously really developing that. So, and just to remind that uh, what I am saying, it will not work for you. Uh, so please experiment whatever we have shared and do a lot of study and experiment and see that what it evolves. And tomorrow, maybe next time, whenever you, you will also give a session, you will also tell us something different. So all those factors we have experimented and it has really helped us to minimize some of the complexity. So uh, just by looking at the time, I uh, just want to tell like, Chole, she has crossed English Channel 40 times and she has put herself in a Guinness World Record. Imagine the kind of mental stamina, the kind of preparation, the kind of, the kind of challenges she has, she has gone through to reach to this level. So whenever we think about like crossing the English Channel or building this large complex digital system, which Maria is trying to build, it's a continuous journey where you will come across many different challenges, but with the right mindset. It's the mindset is all about like, okay, let it come anyway. I will explore it. I will find a way and, and let us all together figure it out. So that what we are seeing could be a way forward and, and, and that, that will help us. Mm. I, I have covered it very fast in the English Channel. Uh, <laughs> covered that English channel uh, the very fast because Mark is, we reached the time actually. So we want to give a dedicated time for all of you to really discuss. Let us discuss like what comes to your mind. What are the thoughts that comes to your mind? So Shonda, now we've got one in the chat and yeah. Mukesh, you want to unmute yourself and ask? I can ask on your behalf if you like, but I thought you might want to ask directly. Uh, it's always good to put your voice as well, Mark, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so Chandan, uh, I guess we have been debating in the past as well. And uh, it is great to see uh, the learning that you have shared. But, you know, what comes to my mind is that, you know, with everything there, you know, we, we have a lot of tools, a lot of ways, a lot of yeah. learnings, a lot of success stories to learn from. But end of the day, I always see a challenge where how do you balance your efforts between the long-term impact that you want to make, where you want to work on the belief system, you want to work on, on, on creating that mindset, which enables yeah. Yeah. them or everyone to achieve the, the result, mm -hmm. or also yeah. providing short-term support, you know, ensuring that, you know, they are able to get that momentum in their journey yeah. of their learning, yeah. right? So how do you balance your approach yeah. there? Yeah, so so that's why I immediately zoom into the silver bullet part and 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 talked about the Avengers. So you see, it's a it's a actually continuous evolution. So I also put that uh, that continuous evolution part. So so we need to have a conversation among all the leaders and all the team members. Like what it what what it fits to us. What do we would like to achieve? Should I solve this problem now or should I talk about the long term? Because we, it everything is a context specific. Because right now, if I am bleeding, like I'm not able to make money, so should I make money now or should I build a system which will give us money in another 10 years? So it's a sign, some kind of a conversation among the team members and come to agreement like a, why, what do you want? Long term or short term? What what it works for us? So with the architecture team, with the product management team, with the with the all the team members involved to build a system, we need to come to this agreement and 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 come out with the action plan. Because uh, there is see right now there is a, there is a crisis in the market, right? Like uh, so 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 either we build a system which will sell in ten years, or I we do something which will immediately make us give us some money for some breathing space to reinvest into the next feature development. So. It's up to us. How do you want to take it I, as a whole team? 
I guess you really touched upon the very crucial part. Uh, it, it's a very difficult question, I, I know, uh, and uh, glad that you you call it out. And I, I completely agree. You know, it is all about the context. It is about the people involved, right? They have to figure out what yeah, is good yeah. for them, what is best for them. Thank you, Shandan. Yeah. Thanks, Mukesh. It was an excellent question. So, Shandan, we have another question. So, yeah. Emmanuel asked, is there more information on the Obeya tool? Ah. I, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll, I'm just thinking, okay, I might have written something on LinkedIn. So, I'll search it and maybe I'll broadcast somewhere because, uh, because of my habit, actually, whatever we experiment, we usually write it in the, in the, in the LinkedIn post so that we, it, it helps us to become better. So I'll try to find and some, somewhere in this channel, I'll broadcast it like Obaya because we have been using his Obaya for at least two to three years. Yeah. yeah if you want to share that with me, I'll, I'll share it when yeah. the recording yeah. and the slides go out. I'll be happy to do that. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I'll share with Mark. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? If you want to just unmute yourself and ask Shondon, feel free. Or if you want to throw it in the chat, I can ask on your behalf you'd rather do that but yeah so what else y'all or it, if it is not question you can also echo with me like if you have come across similar types of challenges in the digital transformation journey mm -hmm. if nobody's going to ask then i'm going to take you up on your offer shonda <laughs> Um, so it seems like the larger you go in organizations, the number of dependencies seem to increase. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, True. How do you approach, because many times when you talk about dependencies, it involves organizational changes. You have different yeah. departments with different department managers that, mm -hmm. um, that manage different you know, groups of people, for instance, you have UI designers um, yeah. and you may have a UI design group that aren't formally part of a scrum team. Yeah. Any advice there on changing the, cause that's very difficult to change is mm -hmm. the organizational structure, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So we, 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 we come across this one always, like this is very normal, natural thing. So that's why in the challenging part, we talked about silos, like there are rooms, there are rooms in the organization. So no rooms talk to the other rooms. And if I am a UX expert and if I am a say in, 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 the, in the other group, so there is a possibility that we may not be aligned or you may not be really um, the work for the shared goal. So there is a possibility. So how can I break that barrier? How can I actually ensure that the walls, if, if walls can be broken if I cannot bring break the wall if somewhere virtually i can connect there so so that's how actually we touched upon this particular area somewhere some way that information needs to be radiated somewhere which actually talks about like what is hindering what is blocking like in our achieving that bigger goal like so so of course in the big room planning like when yeah, you talk okay. about big room planning, some way uh, need to be talked upon. This need to be really discussed and put it into the table. So it's up to the facilitator, like how well we can churn this information out from this corner and bring it into the common wall. So our always utmost attempt is actually there must be something hiding, blocking somewhere in the corner. So we should bring this out at any cost. So we work for that. We talk to the leadership team and we see that like there should not be anything which is siloed. The thinking of the siloed, can we smell it? Can we some way really figure it out, detect it out? So, so that we can bring into this wall. And of course, it's not just the wall. It's also the technique of this liberating structure, which is also helping us. Like it's the people mindset, which is actually we are reprogramming them to really think big, not think silos so the coaching also sometimes enable that to happen we go to the team we sit there we coach them so we have a multiple coaches who are actually playing this role and 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 that great impact we can seeing now like the the, if, the the same people who are with us for a long time they have actually come out of that mindset like okay it is not only their habit actually the business process is something like that which is siloed now the we are trying to re-engineering the business process so that it, it silos can be eliminated like maybe through below stream mapping or maybe user story journey mapping somewhere it has to be surface out but it has to walk up on so it's exactly why some people opt to uh work in yeah. startups because you don't have those dependencies in a startup, ah, right? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. True, but it's it's exactly you're right. Actually, but the enterprise it's it's the bottleneck for the enterprise. Actually, the large organization, like giant organization, they have this kind of difficulties actually because they have built over a period of time such a mammoth walls among themselves, which is causing some kind of a delay in the system. But they have all the money. <laughs> Startup is struggling for the money. <laughs> <laughs> they have a cash. Thank rich. you, Sharon. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Has a question. Any Anyone? other thoughts? Not a question, actually, but uh, yeah. just yeah. adding on to this, uh, what uh -huh. you shared, Chandan. Yeah. Uh, I also see that uh, at times uh, we also need to enable our leaders to understand yeah. what's more True. important. Yeah, uh, yeah. At times, uh, you know, people have become successful in in certain way. You know, they have been successful, say, in in the command and control methods, <laughs> right? And they yeah. really want to know everything, and uh, somehow they don't realize that it is showing. Uh, it, it is reflecting that they do not trust enough mm. with the team where they they can imagine them to tackle those challenges by themselves. And then they try to put across a lot of process overhead on top of that. <laughs> that makes it yes. so complex. Yes. So how can we enable our leaders to mm. trust teams? How do we enable yeah. them to, to go away from the command and control and not, not have the need of knowing everything of the change that is happening? Yeah, good question, Mukesh, actually. So let us look at the th Thanos face again. Thanos, I put Thanos. Look at this face. Look at this face. So he's our customer. And he's our leader. Leader is sponsoring us. He's our customer. So how can you satisfy Thanos? So that is actually, you see the discovery journey. No tool, no process, no rule book will help us because the Thanos itself is a complex system. So it's all our wisdom, which you have gathered over a period of time. And by exercising all this wisdom, how close I can be with the leaders? How can I be influence the leaders? Or basically I can enable him or her to help her or him goal. So I understand, empathize, work with that. And for that, coaching will is going to significantly helpful for us. So I'm keep on repeating this coaching, 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 because this is a very powerful technique. The great coaches can really do a miracle and they can uplift that legacy mindset, whatever you are just sharing, the command and control to that democratic mindset. Like, okay, let us all together build. So it takes time, patience. Sometimes we don't have patience, so we just leave them. Okay, I can't help him. Or she or she is not going to change. Thanos will be Thanos only. We can't change Thanos. <laughs> There's no other go. <laughs> All right. With that, Shonda, maybe we uh, should land it there because we're running up against the top of the hour. But I want to yeah. just personally thank you for taking the time yeah, to speak yeah. to us. Could listen for hours on end on you speak on this topic because it's so huge and so large, right? But uh, yeah, thank you immensely from thank you. <laughs> the Masters of the Universe for this opportunity to speak with us. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Thank yeah, you very for much. Sure. All right, well, I shared in the um, in the chat, so you'll next couple of days, you'll receive a yeah. link to the recording of this as well as the slides. And yeah. Shonda said he'd also share a link on one of his yeah. He'll have to look oh, through yeah. 700 articles that he's written <laughs> to find the Obey a Tool article. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, everybody. Well, thank yeah. you so much for coming. And Shondon, thanks again. We will see you next time. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys.